I've been watching for the omens I've been listening to everything you said It's been running through my head Locked and loaded I got the feeling that you know it Yeah, I've only just begun I won't stop until it's done Till you're broken So welcome to the fight Welcome to the fire. Hello and welcome to our first ever virtual career fair. We are coming live from our Orkla HQ in Oslo. And this is the first time we're doing this kind of thing. So you got to expect the unexpected when you're trying something new, but we are adapting to the current <laughs> global environment here. But this is pretty much like live TV, so anything can happen. But we hope you have a fantastic time with us, and there's so many of you joining us from all around Norway and also across Europe. So my name is Kate Auna Singram. I'm head of recruitment and employee branding here at Orkla, and I have my lovely partner in crime joining me. Yeah, Axel. I'm a key account manager from Orkla Foods. I work with selling Grandiosa and other known. Uh, no brands and uh, I try to help out when Kate asks for doing uh, ask me if I can do events like this so I will help Kate trying to guide you through this session which I can promise you brings uh, a lot of good information to the table and for those of you who stay till the end uh, one of you will win an iPad and some airpods displayed here if you just uh, follow the QR code to complete the Oracle quiz uh, and throughout the session, we will give some information uh, that may be helpful in the quiz. And important to notice that you can answer, you can ask questions in the chat. Exactly. The yeah, the chat is open now, so you can start sending your questions through, and we will be addressing some of those questions at the end of the session. But also, we will be uh, have the chat open for a full half an hour after the session concludes, so that we can answer all your burning questions. So this, the whole concept of a virtual career fair is to turn the traditional company presentation really on its head. So we couldn't do a typical uh, Orkla introduction. So we thought, let's make it easy for you. Take the best bits of what makes this company, frankly, pretty, pretty great and put it in a movie under two minutes. Yeah. So let's roll film. Yeah, so welcome back. Uh, we hope a short video like this is helpful uh, in showing what you can do in Orkla and what we do uh, at work every day. And uh, if not everything is clear yet, uh, don't worry. We will try to answer a lot of questions during this hour. And as we mentioned earlier, 
ask questions in the chat. Exactly. And I think, I don't know about you, but what always stands out when I see that film, 1654. How many of you are shocked that Orkla has been around that long? I think it just shows I'm always quite proud about that fact, the tradition, the history, a company that stands the test of time. So key takeaway, definitely. But I think, you know, I think it's important as well that you guys are here to find out about what different career journeys and what kind of different paths you can take at Orkla. So we thought we'd tell you a little bit more about ourselves because we both have had very different paths into Orkla and backgrounds. Definitely. So Oxen, why don't you give us a yeah. bit of insight into your journey? Yeah, I started studying at uh, NHH, Norwegian School of uh, Economics, which many of you guys are at home there. Are uh, I understood it's from NHH, and I started there. Maybe a bit different background. I went through the student union and did lots of different things while uh, while studying, and I uh, did the normal application process for Orkla and became a brand manager for Stabure uh, within the food service market. And I then became a senior brand manager before I moved over to sales. Uh, I started working with sales, so. It's uh, it's been kind of uh, within three years. That's been a lot of moving internally, and I yeah. think that's been really great. Yeah, and it does. I think it strikes me. We we know the millennial generation. Yeah, you want you want to progress. You're ambitious. You want things to happen quickly. And I think now, typically, those graduating are going to have almost eight different job changes or careers in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. So this is a great example. Within a relatively short period of time, you've been able to try so many different things you're still growing and developing. Yeah, definitely. And it's internally as well. It's not just that it's different positions. It's pretty, uh, how do you call it, natural because it's yeah. gone from seeing a brand, how it's made, how you make it as a project manager. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Being a brand manager is yeah. much about that. And then now selling the product to yeah. other customers. It's really, it's really nice journey. It's broad, broad competence development. And yeah. actually, funnily enough, Oxel and I, when we both his first uh, contact with Orkla, his first interview, was actually my first interview. <laughs> and when I was quite new to Orkla, and I called him up to screen him for the brand manager position. So we have really come full circle yeah. sitting here with you all today. Yeah, that's true. I remember a Canadian woman trying to speak Norwegian <laughs> <laughs> in the phone. It was, it was weird, <laughs> all experience. But, yeah. but that brings us over to you, though. Uh, you work in recruitment, but also with lots of other things. So yeah. can you tell a bit about what employer branding? What, what are you actually working with? Yeah, I think the key theme here is people. Um, I think I have one of the best jobs out there, actually. I get to work with people every day. I get to find out what makes our employees tick, what they're passionate about, what's important to them. Also, what is our future talent, our future employees look for, and what makes a company attractive? And how do we take those elements and make sure they're really reflected in the employee journey that everyone experiences so we can actually be credible and authentic? So you the show, right? Exactly. So it's not just shouting out there, this is what Oracle is. If our own employees don't feel it mm. and believe it, then we're kind of missing the big piece there. Live the brand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we call ourselves a home to grow, right? Mm. Which is kind of the environment and, and also that you're constantly developing and growing. Mm. Cool. So so you also work with visibility from uh, from us uh, <laughs> as a work here. Like I've been... Yep kind of an ambassador. You've used me for uh, Okla Foods. Many things. <laughs> many things. Yes. Many different things. Yeah. And I mean, the employees are the best ambassadors, mm. right? It's You guys have so much more influence and authenticity than we can ever do as a brand. Mm. So that's why today is really all about the employees and yeah. the ambassadors we have here today. So we're going to switch modes again uh, because we're constantly going to be changing things up through this through the next 60 <laughs> minutes. And again, taking that theme of moving away from the traditional presentations that we do, we're going to, we gave each of our business area ambassadors, we have four key business areas at Orkla. We gave them a challenge to talk for how many minutes? Three minutes, and yeah. not just what it is, but also why they love working at their business areas. And we hope that they've taken the challenge. <laughs> we hope so. And just before they start, just remember the QR code for the quiz. You can scan it on your phone and uh, don't forget if you want to win these lovely prizes. So without further ado, we will kick things off with our first business area, CARE. Best bar, can we try on for a hold us friske? Yeah, and all the way from the 50s, they were also very good for the house. They wanted to lock the tourists in the north and come up with an idea so smart that the world had never seen the market. They found out the north lights. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Has it taken for long? <laughs> Møllers, ta vare på hjerne og immunforsvar. 
Hello everyone, my name is Zinia and I'm an innovation manager at uh, Oracle Care. Uh, at Oracle Care, we're working with a lot of different brands, uh, such as old beloved brands like Möllisch and Nutrilet, Salo, Lano, that many of you probably know about and many of you hopefully love. And also some young brands like, for example, Claude, that we launched only three years ago. So why does my business area rock? I could speak about that forever, but uh, today I have only three minutes, so I will focus on three things. Firstly, uh, I'm very proud of my business area because we have such a high focus on sustainability and uh, it just makes the work very meaningful for myself personally. Um, when we develop our products, we focus on creating more natural and more sustainable products that we currently have in our portfolio. We work with both packaging, making it uh, more suitable for recycling, and we also work with formulation of the products themselves to make them more natural. And we also love to test and experiment. While working on new innovations, we um, implement the principles of lean innovation and design thinking, and we co-create constantly with our consumers to make sure that the products we're coming up with are loved by our consumers. And uh, we do a lot of testing and we also sometimes test the products on ourselves, like for example, hygiene products like shampoo and balsam. And sometimes we get a fabulous hair day and sometimes we get what we get. And our latest test was uh, refillable in store where we asked our consumers to bring their own soap dispensers and fill them out with soap in store. And by that we managed to um, save a lot of uh, plastic from packaging. Last but not least, our leaders create learning culture that facilitates personal and professional development. As such, we are um, encouraged to move uh, to different business areas and to different departments within the business area. Uh, for example, I started as a responsible for trade and space, and then I became an international brand manager for uh, Jordan, one of my favorite brands in Orkla. And now I'm working as an innovation manager. And not only you can move uh, between different departments and different business areas, you can also move internationally because Oracle Cure is present in many markets and we have offices not only in the Nordic countries, but also uh, in such exotic countries like, for example, Malaysia. And I myself have been to Malaysia having a workshop with my colleagues from there and also uh, visiting a factory where the toothbrushes are produced, which I find very exciting. So just apply for a position at Orkla here and I think you're never going to regret because it's fun. Thank you. I think we should start to mess with us a little bit, just because we launched this guy here. <laughs> Nei, vi blei her å jobbe på, vi. Og her er kanskje det deiligste vi har lagt frem til nå. Snur fil! Nyhet. Nidar Salted Caramel Brownie. Hi, my name is Marie and I work as a brand manager within Orkla Confectionery and Snacks Norway, which is Norway's largest player within the confectionery confectionery and snacks industry uh, with 72 brands and over 500 product lines. And when working within uh, Orkla confectionery snacks, one of the best things is that you get to work with really strong brands and also very well known products such as Laban within the Shoguru confectionery, Smash and Stratos within chocolate and uh, Kim's within uh, chips and also Bixit within uh, biscuits. As some of our products are sold internationally, for example, Laban is sold in India, but 90% of our turnover is from the Nordics and Baltics, with Norway as the largest single market. Another great thing about working within confectionery and snacks is that we work really closely with our factories. That means that we hands on get the experience and the insight into how our products are really made. We have three factories, one in Trondheim, 
where we produce our candy, one in Skraya, where we produce our chips and nuts. And lastly, we have a factory in Kungelv, where we produce our biscuits and hard bread. When working within Orkla Confectionery and Snacks, you either work within the area of candy, snacks or biscuits. Each area has strong brands and their own challenges and strategies. Needless to say, it never gets boring. And maybe, and lastly, the best thing about working within confectionery snacks is that we do have to taste try our products before they launch. Thank you. What's your story? What's your plan? Where you going to? Where do you stand? In this moment, take a chance. I used to dream of growing up in Wonderland, a land where ideas flood the space just as the creamy chocolate is poured over the soft cakes by the skillful chefs. I used to dream of people working together with passion while kneading the dough, adding magic dust over the flower volcanoes and watching the bread grow. Take the high road to your dream. I used to dream of a place with magicians who could use technology to bring thousands of delicious and colorful ice creams out of their hats with extra sprinkles on top. I used to dream of finding like-minded people who care about the planet and do their best to create sustainable products. I used to dream of lovely marzipan castles and cakes carefully shipped everywhere in the world conquering the hearts of millions of people for generations. But most of all, I used to dream of a home to grow. What would happen if we try? Could we spread our wings and learn to fly? And together together since 1999. At OFI, we dare to care in everything we do. Care is all about people and passion. Flow of products is the glue that unites us. While flow of knowledge makes us stronger. We strive to be the best in everything we do. Your dreams are our, our future. future. <laughs> 70 companies, 23 countries and 34 production plants. That's uh, OFI. It's probably the business area that is the least known to you, but I'm here to enlighten you. My name is Matilda. Um, OFI is the second largest business area in Orkla, and we account for almost a quarter of the total operating revenue. Um, where we differ the most from the other business areas is that um, retail is not our core business. We do retail, but that only accounts for 20% of what we do. 80% of what we do is business to business. We are also the business area that is the most international and 47% of our business operation is outside Norway and the Nordics. So we produce, we distribute and we sell bakery ingredients for both industry and artisanal bakers. Uh, we also sell ice cream ingredients and all the accessories that goes with it. So if you walk into an ice cream shop, like everything there, we supply it. Um, we do have some strong retail brands as well. Idun Mors Jemmebakte is the leading yeast brand in Norway. You probably know it. And we also have brands like Natuli, uh, which produce plant-based alternatives in categories where uh, it's traditionally non-plant-based, so meat and dairy. Um, three reasons why working is in Ufe is such a cool uh, thing. Um, the number one reason for me 
is uh, Ulfi's role and path to the more sustainable and plant-based future. We as consumers are told to eat less meat and more grains and nuts and seeds, which is our core business. Um, through this, we at Ofi are always striving to find innovations that will have consumers do this. Um, the other part is all the talented people from very various backgrounds. As we are mainly a business to business company, we need the experts at key positions. So even though there's a lot of, for example, business people as myself, um, first and foremost, key managers are bakers. They are chefs. They are pastry um, pastry chefs. Um, so my business jibber jabber does not always go in at first. However, working in such a team with people with different backgrounds, perspectives, as well as skill sets from yourself is very inspiring and challenging and extremely learningful, and you will grow a unique skill set working at Ulfi. And lastly, what is great about business to business in general, or especially at us, I believe, is that we more work more as a team than in the retail struggling world. Uh, we work together with our customer and we together create business objectives and we reach them together. And because of this, we are able to have a huge and direct impact on what the market has to offer. So I hope you come join us. My name is Fulanata and I work as a key account manager for digital channels, uh, international sales and new channels in Orkla Foods. And what is Orkla Foods? Well, it's the place where you make uh, Grandiosa, we make Big One, Toro, Fun Light, Nugatti, Misteli, Makrelli Tomat, Stubber Levfosai, and I could go on forever. Um, and yeah, of course, Natuli which is the newly launched brand that we just made and you see it here and if you haven't seen it you probably slept under a rock for the last few months because it's been everywhere but yeah it's 100 percent plant-based um, brand and, and we even have our own uh, cafe downstairs here at skyen so that i probably have to hashtag product placement but off with the three things on why ortha foods rock first of all ortha foods is the biggest business area in ortha uh, standing for around 40% of the total operating and revenue, which means that we do everything bigger in foods. Uh, the brands are bigger, the innovation are bigger, the media budgets are bigger, which is fun. Uh, for me, the customer relations are bigger. And lastly, uh, I'm an American, so this is also quite important that the international career opportunities are bigger. You can work from everywhere from Sweden in Orkla Foods Denmark or even Orkla Foods India. Secondly, uh, Orkla Foods really invest in young talent. Uh, for instance, me, I started out straight out of BI business school as a brand manager for pizza uh, before I became a senior brand manager for pizza. And after a while, I moved to the sales department and became a key account manager um, for foods. And in the job description, it says five years and I got it after two years. So this is something I wish, wished someone had stressed to me when I was a student that the job description ain't the most important one. The most important thing is who you are as a person. If you are motivated, if you're eager to learn, it's gonna show and that's when Oracle is really gonna invest in you as a person. And lastly, and uh, this is probably my favorite thing about foods, but that is just the people and the community we have in the company. And uh, we have so much fun from dinners to cabin trips to a week in Berlin, or we just had a Grandiosa party because Grandiosa was 40 years with all 300 employees. And um, of course, pre-corona. Um, so yeah, if you love eating food uh, and you're ready to have a large responsibility, but have a lot of fun doing so, 
I think that Orkla Foods and Orkla in general also going to rock for you. So that's me. And now it's over to part two of product placement because we're going to run the Natuli ad. Prøv nyheten. Natuli burger. Saftig og digg. Kanskje verdens beste burger? 100% plantebasert. Se etter Natuli burgers i frysedisken. Natuli. Be the change. Welcome back. So now comes actually one of my favorite parts of the session. Um, uh, we're going to start the hot seat panel discussion. But before we do that, the QR code is up again for you guys to make sure that you get all your answers in before we close the competition shortly. Um, but without further ado, I'm taking things over to the hot seat master, Axel. Thank you, Kate. We're over to the hot seat where uh, boys become men, girls become women and interns become employees. We have a lovely set of employees behind me here, which we'll share with you as uh, some of their experiences. And we'll also answer questions which you have asked uh, beforehand. I have this weird thing here, which is a microphone, which I will point at everybody and try to uh, catch the sound so you can hear it as well. But uh, that's why I'm standing a bit awkward if, you, <laughs> if you're thinking about that. Okay, but we're starting out with uh, with you, Big Dis, because uh, Renata just uh, ha had the business area presentation, and you uh, were actually working for Renata during your internship, weren't you? Yes, I had a BI internship, and uh, Renata was my boss. Uh, and together we worked on this very exciting project that was about taking the Grandiosa brand um, into out of home, which means that it was not in the supermarkets. It would be in other sales channels. Mm. And, and you work with that now, don't you? Yes, yeah. after, after my internship, I continued working on the project and we just saw it go live, uh, go live a couple of weeks ago. It's super exciting. Awesome. So so basically, do you uh, do you think that uh, are there lots of things in common with the internship you had and the work you do now? Oh, for sure. I feel what I learned in my internship made me ready for my position as a brand manager. And it's just become bigger and with more responsibilities now that I'm a brand manager and not just an intern. Yeah. But it, it was definitely uh, some points of parity. Mm. And, and you went from being an intern to having a junior brand manager role before becoming a like full-time employee now. Uh, just explain uh, how that worked. No, so when I was done with my internship, I was offered a position to continue on this project with the Grandiosa project uh, as a 40% role. And then I was also writing my uh, thesis with Turu. So I was a lot in the Oracle building. And then when I delivered my thesis, I started as full-time brand manager for uh, Grandiosa Pizza Snacking and Turu Pizza Bottoms. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you so much, Phoebe, because uh, uh, I hope uh, students are taking notes now. So uh, we're having some microphone trouble, just uh, trying to adapt here. But uh, Vig, this uh, went through the transition to getting a full-time job through being a junior uh, brand manager. But you don't have to do that, do you, Sabrina? Because you were an intern just a month ago. Yes, I was an intern this summer, actually. How do you feel that transition has gone? Uh, are you scared still? or is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it goes quite smoothly. When you start off as an intern, you know, you have a few weeks to get used to the whole environment at Orkla. So when you start as a full-time employee, then, you know, you feel you feel good and confident. So good. Uh, and you're fresh out the box. I just I want to ask you a question that many people are wondering, and that is, well, how do you think that getting responsibilities from the first day, many, many businesses are saying that, how do you think that phrase suits Orkla? Uh, I'd say it suits Orkla very well, you know, from right off the bat, you know, you're thrown into projects, there's a reason why they hired you, so you have a role you need to fill. Uh, so I'd say, you know, you get responsibilities and it's very fulfilling, you know, coming straight out of uni and the internships. So it's a lot of responsibility, but also a lot of fun. Yeah, so good. And uh, I have to ask as well, because I think a lot of people are wondering, how did you go from being an intern to getting the job? Yeah, OK, that's a difficult question. I mean, from day one at the internship, I was, you know, very eager to learn and tried to like show off my assets and and uh, took on a few extra projects here and there, you know, to show off, you know, what I could do and then told them that, you know, I'd love to work for Orkla, <laughs> tried to make them like me. And uh, thankfully, a position opened up even in the middle of the pandemic. So, I mean, I can't be more thankful. Mm, that's, that's great. I, I, we love honest answers. <laughs> that's good. But you don't have to be an intern uh, to get the job because uh, Liva, you applied uh, regularly for the Orkla IT Young Professional Program. Yeah, and a rumor has it that working in IT is the same as working with IT support, but uh, yeah. is that true? Yeah, 
many mistakes are still being supported. But what I see is actually so much more. We work as a strategic advisor for the business. So digitalization and thereby IT is growing in importance and Oracle IT enables this digital journey, how to say, together with the business. So we are involved in all the parts of the business and it applies to everything from how we interact with end consumers to security, marketing, data analysis and more. And to take an example, in these uncertain times when, when uh, with the pandemic and people are working from home still, um, then it's crucial to have good virtual communication tools so we can have stable operations and do business as normal, I have to say, which our client is responsible for. So. That's very good because uh, I think many people are wondering what is uh, really IT in this big world. So going from computers and the digital digital world, we go back to the brands again because, uh, Philippe, you work with a well-known uh, brand, uh, Smash, and I know you're from NHH and I have a question that I think many people are wondering and that is, do you have to be creative to work in marketing? Uh, yeah, I guess the short answer is no, you don't have to be creative to work in marketing. But of course, a part of marketing is creativity. So it's important because we know that creativity sells, so you have to like work with it. But uh, it's a good thing if you like working on creative processes and work with creative tasks. But the most important part is that you should be able to evaluate creativity. Mm. So with Smash, for instance, uh, one of our key growth factors is advertisement. And the Smash advertisements often has to be quite creative. But then, of course, we have an ad agency that like creates the ideas, but then we come in and evaluate them and think like based on our growth goals, which one should we choose and then go forward with. Mm. So it's more like being able to evaluate creativity mm. and appreciate it than actually being that creative yourself. Yeah, so uh, so from like you, you create the ideas right together with a with a with an agency. Yeah, well, it depends. Sometimes we actually create the ideas ourselves, but for Smash, for instance, we have this ad agency that we use. So we like give them a pitch like for Smash, like normally there is like this one clear thing you have to communicate and with Smash, it's this go got there, so it's impossible to only have one. Mm -hmm. So then you have to come up with new crazy ideas of communicating. It's impossible to only have one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we're pre presented a lot of ideas and then we pick and choose. Yeah. Yeah. So it's at least it's fun. Yeah. Very fun. <laughs> Great. So so when you create something, uh, then uh, we're going over to uh, to you, Uda, because uh, when we when marketing creates, somebody has to facilitate, right? And your job as a production trainee is that kind of the opposite of being creative, or am I totally wrong here? <laughs> I think it's like not creative, but maybe it's creative in a different way. We kind of have to go find problems to solve. Um, so yeah, it's you have to kind of look at the factories and the production in a different way, in a new way to find things that you want to improve. But uh, with actually solving the problems, that might not be as creative. That might be more like Excel and ana analysis. Yeah. Yeah. So because I know you're from MTNU, right? Like more technical background uh, kind of girl. <laughs> so I, I just wonder how how do you think that education comes through in your position today as a production trainee? Well, I'm a mechanical engineer, so my education is kind of perfect for a production journey role um, because we've learned the tools that we use for solving problems and understanding what production is all about. But you don't have to have that knowledge. You will learn along the way. So yeah, it's not necessary, but it's a, yeah, it's a good thing to have. Cool. And also one unique thing with the yours and Levis uh, positions are that you are having something called rotation, right? And that's something Orca talks about. And how do you feel that works and what is it uh, exactly? Well, in the trainee program, the production training program, you will be located at different factories or maybe even at the headquarters here during your period. So you will get to have different uh, positions. You maybe have some leadership experience and personnel experience. So you will have to kind of try out a lot of different things. And I think that is very exciting. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. And now back to, to brand management, because we talked to Philip earlier about uh, uh, the more creative part of uh, brand management. But uh, Martin, uh, rumor has it that you're kind of a numbers guy. That's just a rumor I said. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as Philip mentioned, the uh, analytical skills 
come in handy. But uh, it's really fun because you get to put on your detective hat and uh, solve puzzles every day. So it's really fun. And also working with real life numbers is much more fun than working with school assignments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and what kind of brands are you you what what do you, what do you work with? So I work uh, in one of Norway's more traditional brands called Tool. Mm, yeah, I have to admit I knew that because because <laughs> I kind of tailor made this question for you. We work together <laughs> on an everyday basis. So I just wonder uh, how do you feel about working on such a big brand? Like it has to be a, what I I would guess it's a multi-million kroner budget. What, how how do you feel about that? Yeah, but the more money you have, the more fun uh, <laughs> you, you can do. So, but yeah, it, in the beginning it was really really scary, but uh, then you kind of get uh, used to it, and also you have so many great people, skilled people. I can help you help you along the way. Hmm. So uh, so now we just want more money for our budgets. <laughs> <laughs> so wonderful. And then then finally here we're going over to you. Uh, not a Swedish person, but you've been working in Sweden for the last couple of years, haven't you, Sondre? Uh, yeah, that's correct. I uh, finished my master's in in London and then moved to to Malmo in uh, in Sweden. So. Um, being a part of ASA, it's really uh, we have people uh, a bit different places in Europe. So I started there with the team and then transitioned to Oslo mm. a while ago. Yeah, so you've actually done the transition that Rokla is bragging about, uh, about mobility internally. Uh, how do you think that worked? Uh, no, I can speak for myself and it was uh, it was quite easy. I talked to my manager starting in Malmö. We had a deal doing that for a few years uh, and when I was uh, ready to go to Oslo, uh, there was no uh, no fuss about that. Uh, in fact, they were quite positive, so that we have people who have experience from different places, from mm. different angles of uh, of the business. Mm. Awesome. And you work in procurement, and I think that is something that's a bit hard to fathom. What what, what is procurement? Uh, oh, it's a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> Orkla has, uh, has a 20 billion kroner spend base, so you get a lot for, for that money. Uh, but uh, we have the raw materials, being the flour in the pizza or the hazelnut in the in the nugati. Then we have the packaging and uh, and also some goods that we buy, and then we have the area which I'm a part of, which is just the indirect, uh, and I'm a part of the uh, factory and machine acquisitions. So um, at the moment, I'm working on a new greenfield project in in Latvia. Where we're building a new biscuit factory, which has to be basically filled with machinery to produce <laughs> those biscuits. So uh, there are a lot of different areas of the business. Yeah, you, you travel a lot. There is some travel, yeah. Uh, I'm supposed to be in Milan this uh, next week, but uh, COVID has, uh, let's say, made us better at doing negotiations and clarifications online. Uh, but uh, that will change, hopefully. That was a really good answer. We're very correct. <laughs> That's good. Um, but uh, it's it's a question that we see pop up from time to time, and it's important for us to answer it in Orkla. And I think that you're you're a great uh, bunch uh, to ask the question. And that is, um, brand management in Orkla. Uh, what is that compared to other consumer goods company working as a brand manager or working with brands in Orkla? If anybody wants to answer it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was really good to have the idea until the finished ad campaign and the product out in the market. Whereas if uh, other companies that have their headquarters in, say, Paris or New York, you kind of just are told what to do. Whereas we get to follow it all the way through the value chain and also be a part of the creative process of what we want to say about our products. Mm. Mm. Yeah, awesome. I think many people are wondering about that. So it's great to clarify it. Now, uh, now wrapping up the hot seat uh, uh, segment here. And uh, thank you for answering. I hope uh, you got to say what you wanted and uh, it wasn't too scary. And you guys just ask questions and these guys will help out answering them uh, afterwards. Because now we're going over to another Orkla freshman, and it's really cool that he has uh, taken the time to come and share his experience from his first year here. Um, we think that having a yes person up front is uh, fantastic, and I uh, hope that you do too. So welcome, Orkla CEO, Janni Valsendic. Uh, Semlich, I'm the president and CEO of Orkla. I've been that for a bit more than 12 months. And first of all, I understand we have record participation uh, digitally, uh, 1,300 uh, signups, and that's great. I heard actually that the big insurance company here in Norway, they only had 100, so that's good news. Uh, as you know, probably some of you, that Orkla was founded in 1654. 
based on mining. And that's a long time ago, but we have lots of history. And we had delivered solid profits and cash flows over many, many years. But now, during uh, the pandemic, we have shown resilience and being stronger than ever before. And I'm proud to say that we took measures very early to safeguard our employees, uh, meaning that we have very few infections. And that also means that we've been running at fantastic service level, 94% uh, in all our factories combined. And in Orkla, we have 108 factories in total. And I was in a couple of customer meetings last week, and the customers actually said that you've been world class. You have been better than the global peers on service delivery during the pandemic. And you've also been better than the smaller local competitors. And this has led to the fact that we've had a fantastic balance sheet and a cash flow uh, during the first half of 2020. Actually, 500 million more of cash flow uh, versus uh, 2019. On top of that, uh, during the pandemic, since we have been able to deliver on the, those basic priorities, we've also had the privilege to work on the M&A agenda. So we made a big acquisition in India just uh, seven, eight days ago, where we are welcoming 3,000 new colleagues to Orkla. So in total now in Orkla, we'll have 21,500 colleagues. And this will double our revenue base in India. Uh, and we're buying a company existing in India since 1983. And our brand uh, in India has been around since 1923. And we've been in India since 2007. So that just shows the international platform of Orkla. We also bought a smaller company in Norway just a couple of months ago called Norgesplaster, which gives us a fantastic platform on the pharmacy part uh, in Norway. And then, uh, fortunately, PepsiCo, <laughs> you know PepsiCo, they have decided to exit Scandinavia on their breakfast portfolio. So also recently we acquired their whole breakfast portfolio into both Norway, Sweden and Denmark. So that's all great. And then you might wonder, why should I choose Orkla? Uh, because this is a great start. But first of all, I would say if you join Orkla, you will come to an international company, but still with local autonomy. We're based in Oslo, we're based in Stockholm, we're based in Copenhagen. We're actually based in more than 30 markets. But we have an international platform, but with local autonomy, uh, meaning that you have more freedom than global peers where this one standard approach to everything. We believe in our 300 local brands and very often number one or number two brands. And our oldest brand in the portfolio is actually in Estonia, a brand called Karlev was founded in 1806. So we have iconic brands in many, many markets and that's part of the Orkla philosophy to be number one or number two in each market. So for ketchup, for example, we're much bigger than Heinz on Eden ketchup in Norway or uh, Felix in, in Sweden. Uh, we're bigger than Dr. Oetker on pizza and I could go on against uh, Procter & Gamble, Unilever and the big ones. At the same time, you're part of a bigger system. So you will get the scale and the resources and the talent, which I believe we have a greater setup for than the small, very small local competitors. So that's uh, part of the selling proposition to you. And then I would also say that since we are in the whole value chain, uh, our company is very interesting from an engineering point of view. You heard a little bit about that earlier and also a sales and marketing point of view. The fact that we have 108 factories and the fact that we deliver important products, important brands to the society, means that we play a role uh, more than just the products and the brands. So actually during the pandemic in many, many markets, we have been defined as business critical for the society and business critical for the government. And this has also led to the fact that our market cap now is 92 billion Norwegian kroner. And we've had a value increase since our Q2 results of close to 9 billion of, uh, of shareholder value creation. And why do I say that? Well, that gives us enough scale and resources to work on the longer term agenda, on the medium term agenda. 
And uh, actually in Norway, we are the biggest listed company not owned or partly owned by the government. Yes, you have Telenor, you have Equinor and you have DNB, but those companies, to be honest, they are actually partly owned by the government. And to me, having private shareholders also means a difference in terms of our flexibility and the way we also incentivize and the way we build talent for the medium to the long term. And then you could say to close in, oh, that's all good, Jan Ivar. I hear about Orkla, the international presence, uh, the value chain, fantastic, exciting industry. But what more? And there I would say that we are a value driven company. We are a purpose driven company. So to us, the values are important that we can make a difference on the sustainability agenda. And the recently there was this survey in Norway uh, where they made a survey of the 100 biggest company companies in Norway saying, do you actually do the climate footprint, footprint reduction according to the Paris Agreement? And guess what? Only four companies could document that climate footprint reduction and Orkla being one of those four companies. And to me, that means that culture is strategy for breakfast. You have heard that from Peter Drucker during your student times. Uh, but that's so important because I think all companies, whether it's in Norway, Sweden, uh, the rest of Europe, uh, they talk about and they have a strategy for sustainability, but we have actually done it. And that's the cultural part. That's the people part and the execution part of the value set we have. So to us, there are three values being trustworthy, inspiring and brave. And what do I mean by trustworthy? It means that we do the right things, uh, the right behavior, uh, the right, right uh, principles around accounting, around our standards. So you will learn a, a platform at Orkla that you can also utilize later in your life, whether you are in Orkla or not. So going to a startup before you have the trustworthiness in order, that's a challenge. So to us, having that as a foundation is very important. And then being inspiring, being innovative, uh, making a difference to the whole society is important for us, that we're part of something bigger. And then finally, being brave. In Orkla, it's allowed to take risks. You should take risks. And it's also allowed to fail. Very important as part of the Orkla values. And since we are so big, since we have the solid balance sheet, we've always paid out dividends. It's easier for us to be brave when we have this foundation of being trustworthy. Then we can build on top and have the best of both. Being solid, uh, doing it with the right behavior and doing the right things, but at the same time, really thinking as a challenger, even if we are a market leader. So as you can hear, I'm very enthusiastic about Orkla. I love this company, although I've only been here for a bit more than a year. But that's solid proof of, of the sort of journey we are at. We have many people in our organization from uh, being here one year to actually, uh, actually one employee in our company has been here for 65 years. So that's the record I'm not going for, but still uh, that shows the sort of dimension of Orkla. So good luck. Uh, I hope this was uh, encouraging for you and I hope that you apply for Orkla and that you're chosen by Orkla. So all the best and good luck.
Welcome back, everyone. We are getting close to the end of the session, but we hope you enjoyed a few highlights from our summer 2020 internship, which we call OLIFE. And I think when people see this video in Orkla, they actually want to be an intern. So you have a lot of fun. You learn a lot. And we ran the whole internship virtually, actually, in response to COVID-19. But what did you think in terms of hearing from Yonivar? What are your key reflections? Um, I, th I think it's uh, it's cool to hear um, hear about the values when I mean, top management talk about it, but also live uh, the brand, yeah. uh, as I said earlier. But it's it's all about being, for instance, brave. Uh, you get you got to try. Yeah. <laughs> if not, there's uh, yeah. there's no point. And if you try, you maybe succeed. You maybe you succeed, or maybe not. But mm -hmm. the company yeah. always backs you up. It does. And I think brave is more than words, right? Yeah. It's a culture. It's a behavior. And I also, I think it's so important to also understand. I know a lot of you feel pressured to go the consultancy, the startup route. And I think he really articulated well where Orkla's sweet spot is in mm. terms of getting the boat best of both worlds really well. Definitely. And uh, we will now close uh, the submissions for the quiz. Yeah. And uh, so we have to pick a winner and uh, see yeah. who gets coming soon. Uh, and yeah. don't and don't forget there's a lot of questions coming through the chat which is fantastic and we feel like a command center here <laughs> furiously answering uh, as many as we can and we're going to try to answer a few live on air for you as well but before we get to that i think we i think a lot of you are here for probably one one of of a few reasons but we have a lot of internship positions <laughs> that we are recruiting right now. How many do we have? We have 46 positions and that is it's fantastic to stand here having an event like this and just have lots and lots of positions to offer yeah. you because that's what we want to do. Exactly. These are these are opportunities to learn and really get that experience before you actually embark on your career after school. And we actually started with six, as you saw in the video a few years ago, and now 46, it shows, I think, the success and the longevity mm. and of, of that program. And it covers so many different functional areas. Definitely, and, and it's really important to say, just apply. It's really, it's really no danger in applying. You only thing that's for sure is that you won't get the job if you don't apply. So yeah. just try yeah. to apply. It's, uh, yeah, it's fun. And are we only recruiting interns right no, now? No, we are not, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> we are also we have the production trainees, uh, which have a, a deadline this week on Thursday. So yeah. note that down if you think production trainees sounds cool. And now Thursday, repeat that. And also Orkla IT are coming with more information on their young professional program uh, this January actually. Yeah, yeah, which is a fantastic program. And also we recruit financial controller positions and brand managers throughout the calendar year. So we, we recruit new graduates into those positions. So again, we'll show you how to follow us on social media. And also you can go to our career site and register for job alerts so you're always in the know in terms of the opportunities. Exactly, and, and uh, I think uh, that uh, th there's one question that always runs around the head of yeah. everybody who's trying to uh, deliver an application, and that is, what are you looking for in an application? And I think you yeah. maybe, can, can you maybe just explain, you've been working in recruitment for quite a while, and mm -hmm. what, what are you looking for? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's no magic wand kind of combination, but having been in recruitment for over a decade, um, I have seen a lot of CVs, applications. I've been in a lot of interviews. And I think sometimes what you can, you can focus so much on your grades, which are important, but we also want the full package, right? We want people who have maybe gone on exchange, experienced a different culture, um, someone who's been involved in sports. That's fantastic informal leadership experience, student associations, student leadership positions, part-time jobs, summer jobs, other internship positions. I think we're looking, we, you know, we heard from our panel, we want to think creatively. We want to think out of the box. And so don't, tell us what you think we want to see. We want to see you. So say if there's something Orkla can do better, put it in your application. If you see an improvement potential, we want to hear about it. So be brave as we've heard throughout the session today and really put yourself out there. And I think some just easy things to stand out is obviously you attending a session like this is fantastic. You're familiarizing yourself with the company. And we're giving you information that's not on the corporate site. Mm, that's important. Exactly. Mm. So, so, 
yeah, you have just just think that we we want you to, to apply. I think that is a really great summing yeah. up also, Kate. Exactly. So so it is. I think again, it's uh, in terms of the recruitment process for the internship program. I know there were quite a few questions on that. Um, the deadline is September 30th, so you have a few weeks left for that. Um, and we will be running uh, the recruitment process through October. It's going to be a little bit different this year, but we are going to be using our gamification assessment tool for everyone who applies. You'll be sent a link to complete a very fun assessment uh, on your mobile phone. And then we will invite uh, some smaller groups of candidates to virtual assessment centers. So I know some of you wondered, we've typically had in-house assessment centers. Thinking safety first, we are shifting to uh, a virtual. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, did we have any questions that we maybe can answer now on the yep. end? Or do you want to do you want to pull the winner first or whatever? I, I think, think questions. Yeah, we yeah. can do two uh, two more questions. I think we have a lot of questions about language. Okay. Actually, probably because we're talking English. Mm. Um, and I think Norwegian in the headquarters, Norwegian, it is the recognized business language, but we're an international company. We talk a lot of English. Um, and obviously, I think if you're yeah, if you're working with local markets, yeah, but you know, Orca is it's so global. I think yeah. English is, is something you have a part of your everyday work day. It's just there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah but both. Yeah, but we depending if you're working with local markets, you're probably going to work in the local language yeah. within a marketing brand management sense. Yeah, most likely. Um, and I think just in terms of also we tend to we look at uh, master students typically mm -hmm. for our internship programs. Um, who are in kind of towards either your fourth year, uh, sometimes those who are finishing. But obviously internships are really a pathway towards permanent employment. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions that are popping up uh, often? Um, I think we are just checking. Yes, and also if you want to apply for multiple positions. Yeah. Yeah, then uh, you have to do one and one. You have to register yeah. for each one because of GDPR. Exactly. Yeah. So with legal requirements, so just make sure you, yeah, you multiply for you apply for all the different ones you'd like. Yeah, that's right. And your applications can also be in English or Norwegian. Yeah. So it's it's choose your own adventure there. Perfect. Uh, any more questions, Kate, or can we have the winner ready? I think you guys have been waiting long enough. I wish we had an imaginary drum roll here. <laughs> we can have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can have that. <laughs> yeah, but we are can uh, we are happy to announce that the winner is Eric Havre from uh, NTNU. Yeah. So you are the lucky winner of an iPad and some AirPods, yeah. and uh, we will be in touch with you on how you get them. Yeah, and the rest of you, your gift is applying to our fantastic job opportunities, and we want to thank you guys for joining us for this experiment. Yeah. This is this is again, this is our first time doing this, and I hope you all of our fantastic guests and panelists. We hope you guys have learned a lot, learned something new. Don't forget, we will have the chat open for the next 30 minutes, so keep sending your questions in. We will keep responding. And also, don't forget to follow us on social media, on Instagram, LinkedIn, and check out for, for our jobs on our career site. Definitely. So, so we're going to wrap things up. <laughs> so thank you for following us uh, this evening. And we hope that if there are any questions that you have, uh, fire them up into uh, social media or anywhere else, because we will find them.